Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. And being an owner of an Intel i7 5930K, um, I've got access to um, a rather large amount of PCI lanes, which allows me to run both of my graphics cards in 16 times PCI Express uh, configuration. Now, a mainstream processor like the i7 6700K only has 16 PCI Express lanes. So if you were to run a dual um, GPU setup, you'd be running both cards at eight times. Um, if you move up to an Intel i7-5820K, you will have a maximum of 28 lanes, but you'll still have to run both cards at eight times. So the only way you can actually get um, full support on the Intel side for 16 times, 16 times configuration, you have to go with something like an Intel i7-5930K or the 5960X. Also some older generation models also will allow you to run that same configuration like the 3930K, 3960X and 3970X from the Ivory Bridge um, generation and also the 4930K and 4960X from the original Haswell E um, generation. So those are all the CPUs I know on the Intel side that will allow you to run this configuration also with AMD it's not so much the CPU um, that controls the amount of lanes you have but more the chipset so you need to run the FX 9990 chipset to get a uh, 38 PCI lane support um, unfortunately I don't have an AMD um, motherboard and chipset configuration to do this comparison so I'm only going to have to do it with the Intel side so in my situation I have the 5930K that has 40 PCI lanes and as you can see um, both graphics cards are running at 16 times and I'll also show that as well on CPU Z um, processor is overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz as well and I'm also using 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at um, 2666 megahertz so what I'm going to do is run a few games um, at 8 times 8 times configuration and also 16 times 16 times configuration just to see if there is a difference in performance with the added bandwidth. I'm just going to give you a quick look at my GPU configuration because on my motherboard in um, specifically uh, the GPU layout does change when you're running the two different bandwidth speeds so at 16x 16x I have to have both graphics cards very close together and at eight times, eight times I can have them further apart. So it'll be interesting to see if the trade-off in performance and heat is worth it to run it at the full bandwidth configuration.
Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up my comparison between running your two cards at full bandwidth of 16x16 versus half the bandwidth with 8x8 configuration. Um, as you can see, there were some um, shocking increases in performance that I wasn't expecting. Um, especially with The Witcher 3, I saw an increase of 18 frames per second and I did triple check those results just to make sure and they were consistent. Um, also with Project Cars, I saw an increase of 39 frames per second, which was um, pretty nice to see as well. Rise of the Tomb Raider, I only saw a 6 frames per second increase, so not too much to shout about there. And as you can see, Grand Theft Auto 5, there was no increase whatsoever, so it all depends on the game. Some games love the extra bandwidth, some doesn't actually increase performance in any way. So um, it now leaves me in a situation where um, do I accept the extra heat? and um, take the extra performance or should I just keep my configuration as 8x versus 8x as um, it's a lot cooler um, but all up, I think I'm just gonna reduce my overclock a little bit and keep it at 16x versus 16 so I'll have the full bandwidth and um, just better performance as trying to get an extra 18 frames per second in the game like Witcher 3 with just overclocking it's impossible anyway so I'm just gonna have to find a happy medium with my overclock to reduce temps but hopefully this video was interesting for you guys out there um, and hopefully you enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching